Okay, you see, the other day I was hanging out with some friends and I got asked what has now become a very familiar question. They said, Mike, if money was no object and you could have any amp in the world, which one would you choose? What you gotta know is that for most guitar players, that's about the equivalent of asking someone who your celebrity crush is. And the thing is, I've always had an answer ready and prepared for that question. Five years ago, I would have said I wanted a two rock so I could sound like May, or four years ago, I would have said I wanted a twin so I could sound like Stevie Ray. Three years ago, I would have said I wanted a Marshall so I could sound like Hendrix. Two years ago, I would have said I wanted an AC30 so I could sound like Brian May. And one year ago, I probably would have said I would have wanted a Princeton because why in the world would anyone not want a Princeton? But you see, this time I was really determined to not give like a well-rehearsed answer. Even though I would be more than happy to own any of those legendary amps, my priorities had kind of shifted. I chose those amps because money was no object. And in this hypothetical world, it just wasn't relevant. But I thought to myself in my oh so particularly strange mind, even if money isn't relevant in this hypothetical universe, do you know what is? Literally everything else. Did I sound like Chris Traeger when I said that? I thought about literally all of the other variables. How long is it gonna take to learn the amp? How are we gonna mic it up? Who's gonna carry it? What are the required repairs necessary? But of course I thought to myself in the moment, Mike, you are being a complete buzzkill. If you actually had unlimited money, you would have roadies to carry all of your stuff. You would be touring in the nicest tour buses with the best compartments to place those amps in. You have $2 million worth of insurance on every single one of those vintage amps. You would be a literal rock star. So why would you pick anything less than the nicest, most expensive thing you could get? And that's where I started to wonder, I might be completely wrong. You see, about a month ago when I was doing my usual guitar research, something really interesting came to my attention. It had been reported by quite a few YouTubers and also some very legitimate news outlets that The Edge, the guitarist from U2, had actually abandoned all of his tube amps in the live setting to use digital amp modelers. More specifically, digital amps and pedals. Now, is this big life-changing news for your average guitar player for the guitar world in general? Well, it really just depends who you ask. Most professional guitar players nowadays would be more than happy to throw out their tube amps on the road and just bring their digital amp solutions like your Kemper, your Helix, your Quad Cortex. But this isn't just any professional guitarist. This is a guy who has the roadies, who has the tour buses, who has the whoever knows how much insurance on those vintage amps. But I think particularly everyone online was asking themselves, is this something we should be freaking out about or does it make sense? And I think there's many layers to answering that question, right? I mean, for years, this guy was running vintage hand-wired AC30s and Fender Deluxe and if you look it up, he's running all of these in some crazy stereo scenarios where he has like five plus amps running at all times. And this man, this legend of the industry, deliberately chose to abandon all of those amps in his live setting for one of these. I mean, one of these. I mean, I, I mean technically, I mean, one of these. On a real level, he's actually running all of them at one time because like I said, these crazy stereo scenarios. But what are these? About six or seven months ago, I didn't really know. You see, I was doing this video at the time where I wanted to talk about the difference between profilers and modelers and why that even mattered nowadays. And I wanted to compare the Tonex, which is something that everyone in the guitar world was talking about for a minute, to a modeler that I thought might be able to hold up. So I chose this, the Dream 65. And in the moment, I didn't know how much I loved it. All of my initial thoughts were honest and I liked how it held its own against the Tonex and how it sounded versus the Princeton in real time but I didn't know how often I was actually gonna use it. That was until one day I had a church gig and I had to put together a specific board. For some reason, all of my other amp sims weren't working. And so I was like, let's give this bad boy a try in the live scenario. I was kind of just floored with how it sounded. So I decided for myself to start trying to collect all of the infinity stones. And this was months before I had never knew anything about the edge switching to these. And in wanting to know specifically how one of the all time greats felt in making what was a pretty big leap, I actually got my hands on the third. And of course I unboxed it. And I started to try and play with it and really figure out the sound of this thing. Listen, I genuinely started to like the sound, but getting a day one feel wasn't even close to enough. And I knew I would have to spend some legitimate time actually getting acquainted with this thing. A little bit more room. It's been not that much time. I feel like I'm relearning this all over again. I 
I, I genuinely think it has unique properties that kind of balance that out. So it was working well and I was having fun, but I knew that if I was ever gonna do this just like The Edge, there was one crucial thing that I was missing. Three words, stereo amp modelers. Welcome to the future, as <laughs> I say. The Edge, who I'm modeling this after, has who even knows how many amp sims, but this is the first time I'm doing something stereo and I need, like all these pedal boards that I used to want used to be like gigantic. Especially like playing worship music. Dream 65 feels way more modern. This one feels so much more vintage. Cause it's what I was telling you before. This is like probably one of the more vintage sounding amp sim pedals that I've ever played in my entire life. I don't know if it's necessarily the best, but I don't know it as well as I know the Dream 65, but I think they'll work well together. Cause I think they sound so completely different. This is the type of thing I didn't ever imagine myself doing because I didn't know enough about these pedals or about amp sims. But the more I figure out like what these are and how they interact compared to a real amp and genuinely how guys like The Edge would use it, like it, I start wondering why I haven't tried it. I'd probably want to give it a little bit, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of dirt, you know what I mean? Like if I was still playing, if I was still playing classic rock, like if I was doing that. Definitely use this amp. The cool thing is this one has tremolo, which makes me really happy. Crank these, how much would you actually need a distortion pedal? Oh, that's big. I think inevitably it all just started to make sense to me and I really began to appreciate the fullness of stereo, even when playing really simple things. But I knew eventually there were gonna be a couple things that I just had to try. That's, that's a U2 song, isn't it, right? That's every U2 song. <laughs> that's not just one. It's like every U2 song and like random. And then you just. I genuinely feel like if I brought this to a gig. I also started to feel genuine excitement, like all the time I spent on day one actually mattered and this sound was the result. And as with most things in life, those results start to drive some pretty drastic changes. The thing I've been wondering the most is if running a stereo digital amp sim setup will actually change my workflow. And even looking further down the line, I'm like, is running a stereo rig gonna be addictive? Is this gonna be something I have to do no matter what? I'm okay if it is. Yeah, setup time's a little bit more, but having all those options is, that's next level. As I sat there playing, I think I began to look back and realize something. Yes, there's the roadies, the tour buses, and all the millions of dollars of insured amps, but at the end of the day, the Edge is a guitar player just like the rest of us. When he's choosing to use digital modeling units, he's making a decision based upon a need that best helps his current playing situation. And whether we choose modelers or two vamps comes down to an understanding of what's gonna provide the easiest workflow, the best sound, and ultimately the most honest expression of who we are as artists. And that's actually quite beautiful.
Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. It was so much fun to be able to check out this guy as well as the rest of the Infinity Stones, especially with all the news that's been coming out about the Edge recently and all the gear he's been using. Like, it's really cool to see how things are changing and to see what people think. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you wanna know anything more about the Woodrow or any of the other pedals or any of the other guitars in this video, Got them from the homies of Sweetwater. The links are in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel if that's something you want to do or if you're just curious about any of the gear that I use. Make sure to check out those links. Like and subscribe if you had a good time and most importantly, like most important of all, have a beautiful day. <laughs>